Welcome to the installation video of Hoymiles Hybrid Inverter and the Gateway Product Data Transfer Stick. This episode consists of five chapters, Preparation, Overview, Hybrid Inverter Installation, Electrical Wiring Connection, and DTS Network Configuration. You can refer to the user manual if you need more information. Please note that only those who have been properly trained and demonstrate relevant skills can install and maintain this hybrid inverter under instructions. Now, let's take a look at the tools that we are going to use. Installation tools we will use are electric drill, wire stripper, PV terminal crimping pliers, OT terminal crimper, ferrule crimper, network cable crimper, small Phillips screwdriver, and small slotted screwdriver. Personal protective equipment includes helmet, gloves, and protective suit. Other materials include 4 square millimeter grounding cable, 2.5 to 4 square millimeter DC cable, 6 square millimeter DC cable, 4 to 6 square millimeter AC cable, 4 square millimeter AC cable, RS485 communication cable, Ethernet cable, and RJ45 plug. Then check if any items from the package are missing. There should be a mounting bracket, a communication box, six PV connectors, a double row plug, a quick installation guide, two battery connectors, a grid connector, a generator connector, an EPS connector, four M6 expansion screws and sleeves, a ground terminal, an M4 set screw, six M3 set screws, 12 communication terminals, 15 AC terminals, a smart meter with three CTs, and a DTS. Before we start, let's take a look the ports on the hybrid inverter so that you can better understand the installation process. From left to right, there are the DC switch, six PV terminals, two battery terminals, DTS area, communication area, grid connector, generator connector, EPS connector, and PE terminal. Now, we are ready to go. Please choose the appropriate installation location according to local regulations and actual installation conditions. To clearly demonstrate the process, we will mount the inverter on a stand. You can also mount it on a wall. Please make sure that the hybrid inverter is installed vertically or is tilted no more than 15 degrees. Leave enough space around the inverter. First, mark the four drilling spots according to the screw holes on the bracket. Drill holes with an electric drill with a drilling depth no less than 60 millimeters. Then plug and secure the anchors in the holes. Fix the bracket with M6 screws. Please make sure that the bracket is firmly secured to the mounting surface. Next, mount the inverter on the bracket carefully. Now, we can move on to electrical wiring. Section 1. Grounding. First, prepare a ground wire as needed and then strip the insulation layer of the wire to a length that is 2 to 3 mm longer than the barrel of the terminal. Then insert the wire into the terminal and crimp it tightly with the ground terminal crimper. Then fix the cable to the PE port with them for screws. Connect the other end of the grounding wire to a nearby earthing point. Now, start the AC wiring. The AC side includes grid connection, generator connection, and EPS connection. Step 1. Grid connection. In this step, we'll be using the grid connector which is composed of a waterproof connector and an AC connector. First, strip the 4 square millimeters AC cable and the wire strands to appropriate length. Then insert the wire strands into the AC terminals and use the ferrule crimper to crimp them tight. Next, turn the waterproof connector to disassemble the parts in order and put the parts through the AC cable in correct order. Loosen the AC connector and fix all cables to the corresponding terminals according to the markings on the AC connector with a torque of 1.2 Newton meters. Make sure that all L, N and PE lines are connected correctly. Assemble the parts in sequence. Finally, 
Insert the grid connectors into the grid port on the inverter until you hear a click sound. Repeat the same process to prepare the generator cables and connect the generator connectors to the inverter. Now, let's do the EPS wiring. First, strip the insulation of the 4 to square millimeter AC cable to a suitable length. Then insert the cable conductor core into the AC terminal and crimp it tight with the ferro crimper. Next, unscrew the EPS connector counterclockwise and disassemble the parts in order. And put the AC cable through the connector parts in sequence. Loosen the EPS connector with a screwdriver and fix all cables to the corresponding terminals according to the markings on the AC connector. With a torque of 1.2 Newton meters, make sure that all L, N and PE lines are connected correctly. Assemble the parts in sequence. Finally, connect the EPS connectors to the inverter until you hear a click sound. Next, we can start the PV wiring connection. First, take out the PV connectors and crimp contacts from the accessories. Please note that PV connectors and crimp contacts are used in pairs. Next, unscrew the PV connector counterclockwise and remove the insulator and internal cable gland. Strip the insulation of each 2.5 to 4 square millimeter DC cable by 7 to 8 millimeter. Then insert it into the crimp contact and crimp it tightly. Next, insert the cable into a PV connector until it clicks into place. Gently pull the cable backward to ensure the connection is secure. Then tighten the cable gland. Perform the same process on the negative PV connector. Before you plug the connectors into the inverter, make sure the DC switch is off. Remove the dust cover and insert the PV connectors into the inverter until you hear a click. Make sure that the polarity of all connected cables is correct. Next, let's start the battery wiring connection. Take out the battery connectors and crimp contacts. They are also used in pairs. Unscrew the battery connector counterclockwise to remove the insulator and the inner cable gland. Strip the insulation from each 6 square millimeter DC cable by 7 to 8 millimeter, and then use the OT terminal crimper to crimp it tightly. Next, insert the cable into the connector parts in sequence. Gently pull the cable backward to ensure the connection is secure. Then tighten the cable gland. Perform the same process on the positive battery connector. Remove the dust cover and insert the battery connectors until you hear a click. Make sure that the polarity of all connected cables is correct. Now, let's do the communication wiring. Peel the stickers off from the communication port and we can see six ports. DI and DRM port, meter port, BMS port, two parallel ports, and two DO ports. First, we'll get you familiar with the communication box. Unscrew the communication box and disassemble the parts in order. Please note that the rubber ring in the communication box has dust plugs, and there are opening lines on the side of each hole. We should first insert the cable into the cap nut, then remove the dust plug Press the cable from the opening line in the rubber ring. And tighten the communication box to complete the installation. Now, we can move on to the BMS connection. Strip the insulation layer of the network cable with a stripper and lead the corresponding signal cables out. Insert the stripped network cable into the RJ45 plug in the correct order and crimp it. Prepare the meter wiring cable in the same way. Before connecting the meter to the hybrid inverter, we need to install the meter inside the power distribution box first. Now, we need to determine the connection between the meter and the distribution box, that is, the voltage sampling line. From the picture, we know that ports 3, 6, 9, 
10 on the meter are voltage sampling ports, which are respectively connected to phase A, phase B, and phase C. Port 10 connects to the end line. Please do not mix up those wires during installation. Then, measure and cut out the appropriate wire length following this path, and strip and process the connecting wire according to the electrical standards. Once the process is complete, connect the meter to the main AC breaker with these wires and sequence. Please ensure safety throughout the connection. Next, install the current transformer. So we need to determine the location for current sampling. It can be seen from the signs that port numbers with asterisks are the white wires of current transformer, and port numbers without asterisks are the blue wires of the current transformer. Therefore, port 13 should be connected to phase A's white wire, and port 14 should be connected to phase A's blue wire. The rest wires are connected in the same way. Follow this path to complete the connection of the secondary winding of the current transformer to the meter. Next, attach the current transformer to the corresponding wire to complete the current sampling. First, we need to match the phase of the secondary winding with that of the distribution box, and then, check whether the arrow direction is the same as the current flow direction. Please check the current transformer mounting position to ensure that the connection is correct. Now, we have finished the meter installation. Use a wire stripper to separate the 485A and 485B wires from the other wires at the other end of the meter cable. Then insert the wires into the communication terminals and use the ferro crimper to crimp it tight. Connect the cable to the corresponding port on the meter. Now, all the cables in the communication box are ready. Thread the cables through the communication box. Then push the Ethernet cable into the rubber ring. Insert them into the communication port of the inverter in order. Then tighten the cable gland. Fix the communication box with 4M3 screws to complete the communication wiring connection. Then, connect the other end of the BMS cable to the battery as instructed in the battery's manual instructions. Now, we come to the last part, the connection of DTS. Remove the DTS port cover with a screwdriver. Then insert the DTS into the USB port and use the screws that were just removed to fix the DTS. Connect the AC input of the inverter to the local grid to complete the installation of the hybrid inverter. Turn on the DC switch first, and then turn on the AC switch. Wait for the for green indicators and the surrounding blue circles to light on. Please note that the length of the surrounding blue lights indicates the amount of energy stored in the battery. You can refer to the user manual to learn more about the status of the lights. Once the first communication indicator light of the DTS is on, it means that the DTS is ready for network configuration. Open the installer app on your smartphone or tablet and log in. Then click on O and M at the bottom of the page and tap on Network Configuration. Then click Confirm to enter the mobile wireless network connection and turn the Wi-Fi on. Select the DTS wireless network and click Connect. When the connection is successful, tap on Network Configuration again and enter the Network Configuration page. Select your router Wi-Fi and enter your password. Then click on Send to DTU. Tap on Finish to complete the configuration. If you see three solid blue lights on the DTS, it means that the DTS connection is successful. You can also turn on the inverter self-test function on your mobile app to check for potential faults and troubleshooting suggestions. Thanks for watching.